Welcome to the Alyssa Goodman Show. Every week, I have the honor of interviewing game changers in the wellness arena. And today, I have Peter Krohn. We call him the Mind Architect. And he is very special in terms of what he does. He's been in the business 18 years. So basically, he's way ahead of his time in terms of his technique of helping people go into the subconscious and really release thought patterns and things that they're doing that aren't serving them and really living their best life. And he will talk more about that in terms of how to do that, what he does with his clients. He works with people internationally, athletes, actors, um, actually ath lots of athletes, right? Mm -hmm. and, and business people. Um, and I think what's really amazing about him is somebody said, meeting with Peter is like getting punched in the gut. <laughs> But in a good way, like it's like one of those terms of, you know, they, you get to the meat right away, which mm -hmm. is so phenomenal. So welcome, Thank Peter. You. No messing around. <laughs> no messing around. One yeah. once said, if you want mothering, go see your mother. If you want results, go and see Peter Crone. Exactly. That was what that <laughs> comment was all about. Yeah, exactly. Like, just let me have it. Let me know what's happening. Tough love. Yeah. So beginning... 18 years ago, really yeah. ahead of your time in terms of this whole, you know, dealing with the mind and really getting people to get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you get into that? I mean, it was a series, I think, like most people in terms of the healing arts, like it's the, the wounded healer. So I was going through a lot of adversity myself. I think there's a, there's a big component there. There's just my natural intuition. And I was always curious about why humans do what, what we do. Um, so it was sort of a hybrid of the two, but at that time, particularly, I'd gone through a tough breakup. Okay. And so that was a beautiful catalyst for me to recognize some of these deep-seated programs of insecurity and adequacy that I had about myself that led to not just the breakup, there was a certain component of that that energetically lent towards why the relationship didn't work, but it was more what got revealed as a byproduct. So my mum died when I was seven, my dad died when I was 17, wow. so I was orphaned wow. as an only child. So I had obviously developed, unbeknownst to me, you know, shocker, like a fear of loss. Mm -hmm. um, don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that one out. Exactly. So then when anything of value came into my life, in this case, in the form of a, of a girlfriend, that then departed, you know, it was just a trigger for that whole cascade of feelings of hurt and abandonment to come back to the surface. So right. I had equated it with her and I'd felt like, oh no, I've lost her and she was the source of my love and my security and my fun and 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 that just wasn't the case. I mean mm -hmm. she was the catalyst to reveal the feeling of absence that I had within myself. And the feeling of absence within myself was fictitious. Like the, the feelings were genuine, but the, the foundation upon which they got generated was not true. Right. So, so that was just like, I mean, it was just such an awakening moment. And from that, from that second, literally, like I was a different human being. Wow. So you really just like on your own or you got help to go inward and really figure out where those feelings were coming from? At that moment, it was entirely from. by myself. I was literally sitting in a rent control apartment in Santa Monica. Mm. And however these things occur to us, I can't state claim to insight or when people have great ideas for whatever it is in life. Like we're surrounded by a plethora of inventions and yeah. somebody is accredited with the fact that that was their idea. But like, where did they get the idea from? Right. Exactly. Like, so whether we call it universal consciousness or the absolute, um, the quantified, I, I don't know, but like I was sitting in my rent control apartment, mm -hmm. 200 square feet by myself, and it just occurred to me the truth of, the truth of the answer to all these questions my mind had that were based in insecurity, like will she come back, will I meet anyone again, is she dating anyone, all of these questions that were generating a feeling of fear, Yeah. the answer to all of them was very simple, it was I don't know. And for the first, like that was the truthful answer. Right. My, my ego mind didn't want to know that. It wanted reassurance, right? It's the little child in us that wants to have this sense of, uh, of security. And that's why the questions were being generated to try and find an answer that would actually make me feel better. But the actual truth to the questions was, I don't know. And for the first time in my life, I was totally okay with that. With and the that unknown. was freedom. Yeah. yeah. Total, total, total. So would you say that is calm. one of the things that all of us need to be better at is the unknown, the I don't know what's going to happen. That is some source of freedom for people. Yeah, I mean, 
I listen very astutely, so they don't need to, was the word you okay. use, because that would create resistance, and then okay. that becomes instructional. So yeah. like, you'll get to learn very quickly with me, like I listen very astutely, because words create our reality. So there's no need, True. but if people were to be okay with uncertainty, they would certainly have a lot more freedom. <laughs> Yeah. Is that so? What do you actually do with some of your clients? Um, you know, what's the kind of work that you do with them? I'm sure they're all different in terms of their desires and what they want to achieve in their life. But yeah, what are some of the the basic things that you start out with? Um, very similar to what I just did with you, right? Like, so you asked a question which is very valid and it seems very intelligent and like, oh, would that be good? Like, <laughs> you care that. about people and like, but right. in the way that people speak, they don't understand that they create a lot of friction and resistance. So the first thing I'm doing is really this, it's having a conversation, but I will listen in a way that most people have never been listened to. So I'll be able to mm. hear in the way that they speak how their mind is creating limitations, scarcity models, insecurities that they're oblivious to. So my first thing that I quote unquote do is, okay. is I reflect where someone's speaking in a way that they're oblivious to that is nonetheless the precursor to the problems that they've come to see me about. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, so, totally makes sense. Yeah, so that's where it's powerful. It seems I so love what it, simple though. It, it but is, it, it is, isn't, right? Massively, but, but this is my quote. I say it's very simple, it's just not easy. Right. 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 And there's a distinction there. So it's simple when you understand it. It's not necessarily easy to actually integrate and implement because the, the deep-seated habits and condition patterns that people have established over many years that got generated from childhood, mm -hmm. they're, they're very ingrained. And so once you know, somebody of a certain amount of intelligence you need to be able to go, holy shit, I've done that my entire life, that makes total sense. That's, that's the access, now we start. But now they've got to be able to realize that that is just a glimpse of a world that is still gonna be in conflict with the habits they've already created. Right. And that's where the work starts. So that's the not easy part. Simple to understand and go, oh, wow, that makes so much sense. This guy's so, he seems so at peace. And like, gosh, if I lived in complete acceptance of uncertainty, I would be great. Yes, right. but your mind isn't you conditioned that? to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's the practice. You know, right. It's like you go for a, a golf lesson and you have a great teacher and he points out something in the position of your hands or your elbow or you, you have a strike on the ball that's like, oh my God, that felt amazing and you got a piece of insight and information that helped you have a better outcome. Right. But because your body is conditioned to swing in a certain way, using the golf metaphor, that's not gonna be reoccurring until you practice it. So same here. Okay, okay, so practice, practice, practice. And practice. And practice, and, <laughs> and continue and to practice. practice. Yeah. So the subconscious, yes. um, so many people don't know that we function. Do we function 95 to 98% out of our subconscious on a daily basis? I think it's 93 basis? is the 93, latest. okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so somewhere, I mean, up. it's huge. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, a, it's, the, it's the majority stakeholder in our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, yeah. And is it true that I heard your subconscious is fully downloaded by the age of seven? Is that? I don't know. You've ever heard that? I mean, no. I talk about past lives with people I could talk okay. about at age seven, age three. Right. There are pivotal events that I feel in our lives that we've all been through. It doesn't even have to be a traumatic event, but when we're young and the first time we knocked a glass over and mum screamed or the first time we came home and we were late and dad got upset or who right. knows? They can seem very like benign on the surface, yeah. but it will be the trigger to establish one of the fundamental pillars of our, our, our persona. And so to me, that is the start of that creation of our subconscious patterns. Just like, you know, when someone has a baby and they're like, oh my God, look, they're taking their first steps. Mm -hmm. But that baby doesn't know how to walk. So right. we're back to the practice phenomenon, right? Like, right. But that's the glimpse of, wow, this person has come from more fours to two and now they're walking, but they need to learn and then they slowly start to run and, but then they fall over again because they're running too fast around a corner and they hadn't adapted that. So all of this data starts to collect over time yeah. and builds the subconscious so that now you and I, fortunately, we can walk around town and hopefully, you know, look relatively I'm not elegant sure. <laughs> doing it if you're not under the influence. Right. And, um, not yeah, all the so time. that's all part of the subconscious now. Those yeah. patterns have just been so ingrained. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm helping people understand beyond walking and, and sleeping and showering and things that we've done over and over so many times that we don't even think about it is revealing these emotional subconscious patterns where we've, we've created negation, we've created a denial of ourselves that is a limitation based in scarcity, insecurity, inadequacy. And those things become like just so detrimental to living your potential, living from joy, living from freedom, having relationships work, making money, being in good health, you know, anything right. that most people are into right. is, Absolutely. as far as I've seen, 
hugely thwarted by these subconscious patterns that I believe everyone's born with. So what's the difference between going to talk therapy or going to see you? Um, I'm probably a lot more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> to start with. At least he's honest. <laughs> yeah. um, but I get results. But I, yeah, Exactly, I was going to say. I heard you get results paid for and you get punched in the gut. Like. No punching. <laughs> uh, metaphorical maybe. But right, no, metaphorically. I, yes. I would say, um, yeah, that, I, I just come from a completely different place. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not knocking, I don't know every therapist in the world, and I'm sure there's some are brilliant. But for me, therapy is like seeing a doctor. And as a broad stroke, you know, doctors who we're all relying upon and, and literally save lives are nonetheless experts in disease, infections, literally biological problems, right? right? So if you understand that model, you start to realize, well, wait a minute, I'm going to see an expert in issues, problems. Exactly. And I would equate therapists and psychoanalysts as, as sort of similar, right? They become experts in cognitive disorders, mental issues. Mm -hmm. I'm a specialist in health and joy and vitality and free, right? So wow, okay. do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Like, yeah. So you, if, put it this way, if you wanted to make a shit ton of money, you're not going to go and see someone who's an expert in debt. Yeah. You, probably yes. not, right? right? I would much right. rather speak to a billionaire, <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's yeah. one big distinction okay. is that when people go and see somebody for traditional therapy, which has its place, this is not at all a slight or judgment right. on any of that world. It's amazing. Likewise for doctors. If I, if I literally have a life-threatening situation or I'm in an accident, God forbid, then I want to see that world of Western medicine. Yeah. But for day-to-day -day stuff where people are just popping pills because they can't deal with their anxiety issues or depression, that to me is like a real disservice to humanity. Mm -hmm. So how I differ is I'm revealing what are the limitations. I'm going to the root cause right. of why people have issues. I'm not externally like these therapists and experts trying to manage or solve problems. I'm going to, why do you think you even have it in the first place? So one of my catchphrases is I don't solve people's problems, I dissolve them. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that's possible. You can really over dissolve. And over. You can just melt away. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, with the practice. will get it once you leave. <laughs> <laughs> just like sweep it up and, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. not sweep it under the rug, but sweep it out completely. Yeah, it's not that's, a management system. Like yeah. if you look at Western medicine, and again, it seems like I'm poo-pooing the whole system. I'm not, but you just got to be intelligent and understand what it's about. I know Pharmaceutical companies, they, they have products that I'm sure save lives. Yes. But they're a business. They are not interested in health. They're just not. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the pretense. Right. What they want to do is sell drugs. So if they want to sell drugs because they're a business and good on them, they're trying to make money and for their shareholders and people benefit from the rise in stock of God knows what. But you've just got to understand what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Like if they were really committed to people's health, they would celebrate when drug sales drop. Right. I promise you that's not happening. Right. Right. So you just got to you just got to know what you're dealing with. Yeah. It's not wrong and it has its place. And uh, absolutely. But but so for me, I want to get to the root of why does somebody first of all have a sickness? Why do they have mental issues? Why are they struggling in relationships? Why can't they make money? Why do they deal with anxiety? If we get to why, then there's freedom. Right. And so that's 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 my bag. So speaking of that root, yes. you can you get to that root in one session? It depends on the individual. I and would how say, open they are and how... Yeah. Like, I mean, most people, when they seek me out, they're pretty... They're ready. They're ready. Mm -hmm. they're, they're committed. Right. Um, True. I structure it in a way that, like, I'm, you know, again, I'm not necessarily easy to work with by virtue of how many people I work with, you know, price of entry. There's, right. I, and I set it up specifically that way because, first mm -hmm. of all, I don't want to waste people's time. I certainly don't want to waste mine. Right. Um, I'm like, come to me, yeah, but we're going to get shit, shit done. Like, you know, you literally are going to be a different person. So, yeah. read, so immediately people tend to be open to what I'm going to share. And I just feel like I'm very astute at picking things up very quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, like I just had a phone call on my way here with someone I've never met. Right. Uh, an hour conversation and they've got the gamut of things going on from relationship issues in a marriage to performance issues and um, in their sport. and immediately the guy's like, I feel so much like freer. I feel so After much more relaxed. After talking to you yeah, on that conversation. Yeah, just an hour on the phone. Yeah. Right. Because I can hear where he speaks, just like I was saying earlier, the right. way he's speaking. And, and I understand the energetics of why certain problems show up. Mm -hmm. There's a distinct kind of cascade of, if somebody has this particular issue, then I already know intuitively, without knowing the details, where that's probably coming from. 
Yeah. So then I'll just sort of reverse engineer it with them, and they go, oh yeah, I can remember when I was three or six or ten that this sort of happened. I'm like, great. At that moment, you declared something about how you viewed yourself. Yeah. That then became the foundation for now your behaviors, actions, and consequently your results. And so this it's is physics. I, it really works well. Right. It does. <laughs> no, I believe that. I yeah. love all this stuff. I think for what I do as a holistic nutritionist, I mean, that this is where you get the real results. Yeah. We were talking earlier about food and supplements and all and superfoods and all the things are great. Yeah. But emotionally, if you're not in a good place and you don't have that sense of freedom or you don't have that sense of real joy in terms of your life and where you're at, yeah. you're not gonna see the true it essence don't count of for squat. Right. I'm sorry. I it mean does, yeah. it's it's like I use the metaphor, I love to use metaphors and and analogies and it's like you know if somebody's like in a prison cell you know like having organic foods eating superfoods or having great clothing or nice furniture that's all great but right. but you, all you've done is made your prison cell prettier True. you're still in a freaking prison yep. cell, right so that to me is like that's why I love what I get to do because I literally said to a client uh, two days ago whose family are very wealthy and the dad had allowed her to use the credit card and whatever and go shopping and and it, it's a whole dynamic between them yes, anyway. Yeah. But like I said to her, I said, you've got to realize there's not enough clothes in the world for you to compensate for the deeper seated belief that you're not enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's where you start to see for me, the ultimate form of addiction is to these beliefs of inadequacy. And then we have all sorts of methodologies and escape patterns to try and compensate. But as long as you're compensating, you're not actually dealing with. And what I'm doing is dealing with then have as many clothes or as few clothes as you want. It makes no freaking difference. Right. You're free. Right. You don't need that. Now, it's not to say, like, you know, likewise in relationships, people often think I need to be in a relationship because they struggle with loneliness. They have deep feelings of inadequacy about it or abandonment or whatever. Right. I always want to take someone to a place where they are completely <laughs> in love with themselves and their life. That is, to me, the only way that you will have a successful relationship with anyone else. Otherwise, it's just codependency and you're feeding each other's fears and right. I'll show up in a way that makes you feel safe if you do what I need to me to feel safe and it's just I know dysfunctional so how do you get people to that place uh, in relationships specifically just, or? yeah let's say relationships yeah how do you you point out those facts like yeah. someone's insecure or their self-worth or their sense of loneliness yeah. is a big issue yeah. then how do how do you release it how so let's say that's me how do I release all of that so awareness first Awareness is always the access. Okay. So there's the, the, the So even the, though I'm aware that I do that a lot already. You want to give me an example? You want to go there right now? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I know. No, I mean, I'm, I am so aware of my insecurities and my self-worth and my need to, my sense of loneliness. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but I would assert your awareness, your awareness of your insecurity is part of your insecurity. Okay. Do you, do you get yeah, what I, I get, just said? I totally get what you just said. So yeah. you're, you're aware of your insecurity shows me that you're self-conscious. Yes, very. Yeah, which is adorable and it doesn't make you a bad person and it's but, cute, but it's also going to be a massive barrier to so many things in your life, certainly like intimacy, you know, or being available <laughs> to somebody. Yeah, because you're like fully available. Like, yeah, yeah, fully, because, you're, because your self-consciousness is a survival mechanism which is being born from a deeper sense of that there's something fundamentally wrong with you. Yeah. Right? Yes. So, which is fine, because with you there clearly is something wrong with you. <laughs> No. So, I so can you're, accept very, that. you're justified in having the self-conscious reaction. Yeah. No, but I, I'm, I'm playing with you in a loving yeah. way because you're obviously adorable, you're caring, you're very committed to your craft, you obviously want to make a difference. These are beautiful qualities and yet there's an aspect of you, because you're human, mm -hmm. that has this self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And right. then you're doubtful of the self-doubt. Like, I don't <laughs> want anyone to know, apart from the fact that now we're talking about it on TV, that, <laughs> that you struggle with insecurity. Totally. Shocker. Like, yeah. you must be the only person on the planet. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so, so this is the beauty of like bringing a little bit of lightheartedness and recognizing, wow, what is it that you have decided about yourself from a fundamental, like probably young age, mm -hmm. that mom, dad said something. It didn't even have to be that like traumatic, but you it was became... dramatic. <laughs> Great. Well, then that just adds more evidence. I know. Right? Yeah. Right? Did you want to share one thing that you can or no? Well, okay. it was pretty, yeah, it was dramatic. <laughs> okay. So something happened that yeah. was dramatic that mm -hmm. you heard or felt or saw yeah. that then made you think that you'd done something wrong, there was something wrong with you, something, yes. right? Like we'll keep it relatively conceptual. Yeah. 
So what we want to recognize to answer your question of how is I would ask, okay, well, I don't deny the events and I'm not denying that as a child that was scary or you felt sad or you felt lonely or you felt hurt. Or These all are all the above. combined, all totally legitimate. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is your mind then makes that mean something about you. Right. Right. So that you did X and then that got whatever response it did and that external stimulus triggered in you a belief that I'm not something. Usually I use that, like it's a negation of self. Yeah, totally. So I'm not loved, I'm not wanted, I'm not safe, I'm something, mm -hmm. right? I'm probably all the above again. Oh, yeah. Great. Yes. So where were you born? In Arizona. Well, I was Arizona. born in Chicago. Chicago. Okay, grew up in great. Arizona. So if I were to cut you open and say, okay, here you are, it's on your manufacturing label, born in Arizona, and I'm, I'm not enough. Right. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, am I going to find that anywhere? Yes. I am? Pro Would you, should we get a sore? And <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. Have you told your doctor about this? <laughs> I no. just find blood and bones yeah. and tissue in me. But, so there is actually no, a manufacturing I, label in there. There is a manufacturing well, label you, in there. You're right on track. Yeah. It's on your is. You're There's something I'm wrong like, with woof. you and you're behaving like there's something. So you're right in alignment. Totally. You're actually further I get than it. most people Oh I my God. This is like embarrassing. <laughs> no, you're doing great. You're doing great. I'm holding a space. Right. So you get what I'm saying. If yeah, I, I totally can't, do. Is, is there going to be a manufacturing label born in Chicago? There's mm -hmm. something wrong with you. Is, yeah, there, no. is there? No, no. there isn't, right? Yeah, no. Great. So, so it's not a truth. Yeah. So where does it exist? In the mind, in the subconscious. Yeah. So yeah. it's a story that you have created. And if we really break it down, what's its structure? So it's in the mind. Mm -hmm. In what form? It's, it, there is no form, is there? Is, well, it, the, is there? You, I mean, we could deny yes or no, but in, in terms of the world of matter, it's going to have yeah. some weight. It okay. has some existence. Oh, so, yeah, in terms of that, it does have a In terms of the percentage of the weight? No, no. just the fact, like, what is its structure? What's it made up of? Like, I'm not enough or whatever it is, I'm not loved, there's mm -hmm. something wrong with me. What, what, what is that made up of? Without overthinking it. Without a, oh. If it's in your mind, what's in your mind usually? You mean in terms of brain, my... Don't see you again too. You're way too smart. I need to. I need my to be brain, my brain, my like, yeah, my yeah. like. Um, neurotransmitters. No, neurotransmitters. No, 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 no. What? What? What is like when I say there's it's something just wrong space. with me? Well, space it's is just, there, and then there's something in it. Yeah. It's, so I just said it. Like there's something wrong with okay. me. What am I using to say that? My words. Boom. That's yeah. it. So simple, right? <laughs> it took a again, while. we're back to simple, not easy, <laughs> right, right? Exactly. So you have, oh, yeah. like every human being, and you're doing an amazing job here for anybody who sees this. You have created words, shocker, yes. in your mind, based in some limitation about yourself, mm -hmm. and in your cases, I'm not enough or whatever. So when you live in the world of you don't feel enough, how does it leave you feeling? Not good. Not good. No. Definitely going to be self-conscious. Absolutely. Right? Everything outside of you could be a potential threat. What are they thinking about yep. me? Am I going to fuck this up? Yep. Am I doing it bad? Mm -hmm. All of that lives in that world, mm -hmm. right? But we just ascertained that deep down inside of you, I'm not going to find a manufacturing label that confirms that truth. Right. So again, I'm going to ask you, is it true that there's something wrong with you? No. No. Great. But when you believe that, you have all of those cascade of symptoms and feelings that go with it. Right. So if I show you, which I just did, that it's not true, and so just for a minute, you understand that doesn't actually exist. It feels that way, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually. If that were gone, if that's like you don't live in that, right? Just but breathe into it, different, different pattern there. Totally. If you no longer can look through the lens of there's something wrong with you, like it's not, it just doesn't exist, as a feeling, how would you feel? Amazing. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the set, like just you saying those few words just gave me a sense of freedom and I exhaled and I relaxed. Yeah, I saw and, your breathing pattern change right there. Yeah, totally right? calm so down. So now from that space, where do you need to be self-conscious? Or do you need to be? I don't. You don't, right? Yeah, it's from nowhere, no. right? Yeah. And people will think whatever they think about yeah. you. I'm not going to say they think you're the greatest thing since sliced bread or right. not. But right. either way, it doesn't right. fucking right. matter. Who cares? Like, who cares? Thanks mm -hmm. for sharing. Like, right. that's awesome. I, right. Some people call me a genius. I'm like, that's nice. <laughs> some people might think I'm an idiot. That's nice. It's like, yeah. all they're doing is letting me see how they feel about me. That's actually kind of generous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's right? <sighs> That's oh my god. Listening. That's good yeah, listening. Exactly. That yeah. is right. Yeah, most people don't listen, they just react. They react. Yeah. Exactly. They call that's me an another... idiot. Like if I'm a guy covered in tattoos and someone calls me an idiot and I'm like built, I'm gonna punch the guy. That's mm -hmm. my reaction. You know? <laughs> if I'm conservative and I'm a little shy, I might call the security guy over or like right. you know, something like that. All he said is, you're an idiot. Okay, I got it. Can I yeah. buy you a drink? You know, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah. my god. Okay. You must have so much fun with no, what none. you do. <laughs>
<laughs> you have to. Yeah. But I could talk to you forever and ever yeah. and ever. That was so wonderful. Yeah. Like you helped. Pretty harmless, right? Yeah, well, harmless. Didn't and what you, you helped. That bad? Yeah, no. And yeah. actually, it was okay because I'm okay in terms of interestingly being exposed. But I guess maybe I'm not always okay with it. No. So, well, you weren't. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, but this is the thing. This is why, like, I can remember doing a pilot for the BBC many years ago, and it was a lot deeper and it was a lot more personal. And the guy, it was a guy I was talking to, and he was just shedding tears a lot at one point. Right. And the director afterwards came up to me and says, you know, how do you feel when they're going through all this emotion? And like, do you feel bad that you're making someone cry? I'm like, first of all, what am I like squeezing the lactate? Tears like, out you know, of his eyes. It's yeah. like, like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just talking to the guy. You know, it's like, that's already in there. I'm giving him freaking freedom. You know, it's like, sorry. <laughs> and, I, and anyway, I said, no, I don't feel bad. Tears I know how joy. the story ends. I know yeah. where I'm taking him. Yeah. So likewise with you, mm -hmm. you know, it was a little bit like we kept it somewhat superficial. Right. but. But I knew that you were going to get an experience of freedom. That's just mm -hmm. what I bring people. Yeah. And oh, you felt that. I saw I your did. breathing change. Mm -hmm. So now literally I want you to consider you're a different human being. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Yeah. Right? And we just yeah. didn't even move. Right. And most people are under the impression to become a different human being. They have to change their circumstances. Right. When I get more money, like as far as I know, you didn't lose any weight, right? Like right. that might have been a female <laughs> conversation. Like, right. well, I'll be happy when I lose weight. No, right. that's the same. Mm -hmm. Your bank account is probably the same, yep. you know? Yeah. Like, and yet you're yeah, a different human. Yeah, the money's still the same. All the clothes are still the same. How freaking cool is that? Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. me. Oh, Peter, thank you so much. So fun. You're welcome. I, I ask all my guests if yeah. they had to sum up their mission in one word. Yeah. What would yours be? That. <laughs> freedom. That. That just, just sense of free, just yeah. freedom. Wow. Freedom. Yeah. yeah. Total freedom. We all like need I'm that. literally here to help people understand what it means to be truly free. Truly to, free. To stop beating the shit out of yourselves and to understand it's okay, it's human. But then every single problem, every single problem we have as humans in society and externally, to me, is a byproduct of the absence of freedom that people have within themselves. Absolutely. I reconcile that for people. We have a different planet. Wow. If well, you have that. a lot of work to do. Thank you for Seems being on my way. show. You do. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> but you're like one person at a time, right? Yes. Or many in a group. Yeah. Or, true. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Thank but you. But I'm glad, so happy to contribute. And I'm so honored to have freedom. you on my show. Yeah. yeah I will. Ha, ha, ha.